We are in the dark, evil parts of the forest with the dark creatures. And we have this jump scare drug arm here. Not good news. Okay. Uh, we have Sigurd's cup, beguiling necklace, meat, cloth canvas, lightning rod, steel horseshoe, tinder, piece of flint, and scissors in our inventory. We're gonna go look at this wooden post. An iron chain had been fastened to a pole at the edge of the woods, dwindling down into the darkness below the cliff's edge. That post must be buried very deep in the ground to be able to hold something like that. The creature thought to itself as it glanced down the cliff. The creature rustled the chain and soon after a fierce snarl echoed from the darkness below. Well, don't aggravate the drought more than necessary. Thank you. Wait, water. Okay, let's do our rooms. Nothing happened. There we go. Okie dokie, let's go to the forest path. Oh, now we're here. Okay. We've done, you know, the entire, like, walking around here. Okay, let's do the uh, circle again. Suddenly, the Alva fell from the creature's ear, luckily caught by a pair of frantic hands grabbing after her. The strange power present in the forest seemed to take its toll on her already fragile body. Well, that's not good. Tree, fireplace. Oh, yeah, that was that. Mm. Mm. See if we can combine anything here. Mm. 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 Okay, piece of flint. Whoop! Flint and tinder! If we can, uh, hmm. nope. Um, yeah, still unfinished totem. I don't know what we're supposed to do here. No, no, I'm pretty sure I want that there. Yeah. Uh huh. What do we want to do now? Hmm. Well, I have to walk around. If we do this. There's a thunderous sound, at least. I don't know what that means. We, uh, yeah. hmm. oh. Can we, uh... Can we electrocute him? That post must be... Maybe, no. Uh... Hmm. 
Okay. Can't we electrocute him? What's the what what? Oh, what? We now we can use it. Okay. The f air room triggered the fire room. As the draug fled into the woods below, the creature was able to move a bit closer to the cliff's edge. In its escape, a ring had fallen from the draug's finger, now glimmering in the darkness. The creature held it in its palm while they observed it. It almost appeared as if it had somehow been affected by the power of the sky's lightning. The gem decorating it clearly reflecting the star's light, almost amplifying their glow. did not expect that. With the recent departure of the draug, the white plant was lying exposed on the ground. Isn't this one the prettiest we've seen so far? The creature asked the Alva, who responded with a slow nod as her eyes lingered on the plant. Pick it up, pick it up. The creature marveled at the beautiful plant as it slowly extended its tiny hand to pick it up. <gasps> we have the white flower! I'm scared where the drug. White plant and reflective ring. Hmm. 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 Oh, maybe I triggered lightning before with the with the air room or something? Let's see if it's being thunderous if it's anything else. Oh yeah, here's that. Um Do you want this ring? No? Okay, I don't know if I can give the plant to the tree. This one looks good, but I'd need another ingredient to complete the mixture for you. The ancient tree said as he inspected the plant. Okay. Okay, so I need something more, but then you can actually make something for me. my scissors? Yeah! Blooming plant! With a quick snip of the scissors, the large plant fell down in the creature's hand. As it looked down at the plant, the once strong glow emanating from it was beginning to fade away. I'm not surprised. Herbal ingredients! There we go. The creature asked as it presented the herbs to the tree. Perfect. These would mix well. One moment, my friends. The ancient tree cleared his throat before continuing to chew both plants into a thick salve. After chewing for a good while, he continued. There you are. I hope this will aid you in some way. Be careful with it though. This turned out to be a very potent mixture. I don't even know what it does. Oh, numbing. It's a numbing salve. Okay, I don't know. We can numb Gloson? Gloson? I'm not supposed to pronounce it in English. Hmm. Yep. 
No, that's not what happened. Uh... No, 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 no. Hey, Glowson. Glowson. There we go. You spiked meat with Glowson. Here you are. It looks very tasty, doesn't it? The creature presented the haunch of meat before Glowson's frightening jaws. The gluttonous sow quickly sunk her teeth into the smelly flesh, instantly devouring sinew and bone alike. Not satisfied by the meal, she once more turned her attention toward the small creature fidgeting before her. G good wasn't it? The small creature tried as her jaws opened. Then her expression changed, the hungry mouth turning into a wide yawn as she proceeded to rest her head against the moss-covered stone. Yeah. Sleep. As she fell into a Ooh. deep slumber, the thorns emanating from her body retracted from the clearing. The creature smiled, its hands still trembling. We're getting close. I can feel it. <gasps> Copper gate. <gasps> As the, the red pair arrived activated. at the deepest part of the forest, an unnerving silence instilled itself in the clearing. Unbeknownst to them, they had arrived at the Copper Gate, a lost doorway to the oldest of mountains, rumored to contain treasures long since hidden from the eyes of men. As they stood there, the faint wind carried with it soft-spoken whispers in a strange tongue throughout the woods spreading a sense of unease to plant and animal alike. <sighs> okay, this is the fire statue. Um, but we need like a chain here or something. So the ever spruce branches. A couple of branches had fallen down from one of the spruce trees surrounding the clearing. What are you doing on the ground? You should be <laughs> up there. The small creature thought as it looked up into the thick web of branches. The creature reached down and picked up the two branches. Yay! We have spruce mm. branches. Mm. 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 Nope. Weaver. Copper gate. Chisel. A chisel had been left firmly stuck in the soil. What's this sticking up from the ground? Do you think we can pull it out? The creature asked the Alva, who didn't appear to share the creature's sudden curiosity. <laughs> Whoa! Take it! I the meant. creature reached out with its dainty little hand and pulled out the chisel almost falling over as it stumbled backwards to regain its balance from the effort. Oopsie. All right, let's see what these, uh, these rooms do. It's creepy. What, we can't use fire, but, but we need fire. We need fire. Oh, the rain stopped. Yes. A crudely put together lever of wood and bone was standing near the mountain wall. I wonder what will happen if I pull this, the creature said to the Alva as they looked up at the large door in front of them. Over the centuries, many have claimed to have seen the Copper Gate, although its shape seems to vary from one tail to the next. And when being asked to show others its location, 
None seem to recall the path they only recently trod. Hidden away deep in the darkest of forests during a night such as this one, it appears. However, don't let its lackluster appearance fool you, as it is said to have been created long ago to protect the most powerful of magical beings. <gasps> we have to get in there. This is it, the creature exclaimed. I'm sure we'll find a way to finally get you your wings beyond this gate. The creature pulled on the lever with all of its strength, but only the creaking noise of wood grating against wood could be heard. Right, well we have to make the fire statue somehow glow, right? A statue. The stat- The st And we need like, a chain. But it stopped raining! We can totally make a fire now. Hmm. What? Oh, cracked urn. Hello. As the rain had stopped, the receding water had revealed an old urn at the bottom of the hole. The creature exclaimed as it noticed two worms emerging through the soil. The creature lifted the wet urn out of the muddy soil. Well, it stopped raining, but what does that, except for that urn thingy, what does it do for me? The remains of the severed chain now dangled I think you slowly need that. from. Right? Oops. The post must be back. The creature's weak arms were unable to pull the chain off of the post. Hmm. What? It's a chisel! That totally works. these uh, branches on the unfinished totem over here? Yeah! Finished totem! An unfinished... It looks... It says finished. The totem. It says finished! As the pair silently beheld the totem, a warm energy began to spread from the boulders surrounding it. The radiant light quickly engulfed the clearing, amplified by the Vitorm's magical skin. I see these stones were rocks were giving hints. Um about what we needed. No, still no. Room. Hello, shadowy being. I can talk to you. Hello. Why were you following us? The creature whispered, receiving no reaction. What happened in these woods? It tried, this time a bit louder, but still could not get the attention of the strange being. The shadowy figure appeared entranced by the glowing totem, not reacting to the pair's presence any longer. As the shadowy being didn't seem to mind, 
the creature and Alva decided to borrow the pages and stone fragment hanging from its waist, hoping to find some sort of clue regarding the strange place they currently found themselves in. However, as they had a closer look, neither of them were able to make out the words scribbled on the torn pages. Yeah, let's just borrow it, you know, randomly. Yeah. Hmm. 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 Um. Hmm. Oh. Hmm. Statue piece. Oh, maybe the statue over there is like, is like not complete. Oh no! See, it's missing a part. I didn't even realize it did. Oh, now I see. Look at that. Now we can use our fire After room, right? After placing <gasps> the stone fragment. The creature quickly backed away in response to a loud crackling noise emanating from the statue, lasting but a moment before leaving room for the silence to reinstill itself in the clearing. Now we can use it. We still need. We still need a chain. We still need the chain. I'm presuming it. We can't open it without the chain, right? The creature. Yeah. The small creature. Whoops. Powerful aura. Okay, so. Oh, <gasps> maybe it's bad. Yeah, going in there. Could it be? Hmm. Oh, come on. How do we. I don't know. Combine stuff. Uh. Oh, f really? Now? Now it's fire starter. Now we can. Now we can start the fire. Jeez, game. Well, I guess just flint and tinder doesn't really do much. Maybe. Curses. Well, well. Striking the piece of flint against the horseshoe caused tiny sparks to scatter onto the tinder. As it began to smolder, the creature carefully placed it in the fireplace, igniting the branches. Ooh. The fire was burning brightly, shielded from the weather by the tent hanging above it. Much better, the creature said as it warmed its tiny hands by the flames. The fireplace was already giving off a warm glow and didn't seem to need any more fuel for the moment. Meh. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, hmm. So, okay, I have a fire. Hmm. Awesome. Why? I have a fire, but I don't know why. Hmm. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. What does that do? Oh, oh, yes, of course. Duh. <sighs> Okay, we have fire. Um, awesome. Why? Why do we have fire? La 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 la. Is it stuck as before? Wait, did I use the chisel on the fire? Whoa, wait a minute. Let's go this way. See? As the creature held the chisel amongst the coals, the heat caused it to glow red, retaining the intensity of the fire for a short moment before beginning to lose its warmth. Yeah, hot chisel. I think I'm, I'm thinking that maybe that will help us uh, with the chain, right? As 
the creature held the heated chisel against the base of the chain, the iron slowly began to glow red, allowing it to break the link holding the chain in place. We are great. Oh, okay, so we have the chain now. Yes. All right, let's go to the copper door. Copper gate, sorry, copper gate. Come on. Yeah. Now then. Lever. The creature pulled on the lever with all of its strength, but only the guts. They should get things moving. The creature said to the Alva as she emptied the contents of the urn onto the lowest parts of the lever. It said it said urn of oil, doesn't it? I've been reading urn of soil the entire time. <gasps> Is it opening? The small creature touched the coarse stone, feeling a powerful aura emanating through the gate. Is it opening? Is it? it? Over hidden. Why is it not opening? Why is it not opening? Really? Really, you're not gonna open? You're really not gonna open? What do you want me to do? Light the statues in correct order? Okay, we'll try that. I don't really see the point, but sure. We shall try it. I have no idea what that being is. I really do not. Alright. Alright. We will do it in order. I'm just gonna go double check. I know it's earth, fire, and then I don't remember. I have no idea, actually. Okay, earth, fire, um... Air, water, I think it was. Earth. Fire. Did I say air water? I think I said air water. Oops, it is. I wasn't air. Duh. Yeah, totally set air water. 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 Now then, come on. Is nothing happening? Hmm. No. Hmm. Hmm. <sighs> okay, so I peeked at a walkthrough and apparently Oh okay, we're supposed to touch the chains. And then when you pull the lever, I'm guessing it gives you like a hint of how well you're doing it, right? Okay, okay, I didn't know we could touch the chains. Okay, that was blue. White. Oh! No, the, okay, okay, it shows, it shows, okay. I think that's fire, because they were all orange. Oh, okay, that's green, green. Orange, orange. Oh, blue, white, and white, blue. I get it, I get it. Mm. 
No. Oh no, no, it was correct. Oh jeez. There, I think that's right, right? As the odd pair had moved further into the darkness beyond the copper gate, before the small creature's eyes had adjusted to the shadows, the Alva had suddenly been grabbed from its shoulder. A gigantic shape had picked up the helpless Alva and placed her inside a glass sphere strung up from the ceiling. Three beings slowly emerged from the darkness, who didn't seem at all interested in the small creature standing before them, and appeared to be squabbling with one another. Look at it! Look at it! The fat-nosed troll chanted, enthusiastically pointing at the Alva with one of his chubby fingers. It looks so yummy! Let me chew it a bit and I'll let you two know what it tastes like. The fat-nosed troll made a guttural sound, spouting and drooling saliva as he mustered all his strength in an effort to grab the Alva. But the slim-nosed troll quickly gripped the glass sphere with his long, nimble fingers, keeping it out of the fat-nosed troll's reach. The shiny one is doing fine right here in my ball. I found it. It's mine. Swallowing my shiny will be the last thing you do before I got you like a little fishy. Quiet! Bugger Kongan bellowed, immediately bringing the argument to a halt. I'm thinking... He then continued, letting out a troubled sigh. Irritated by being interrupted, the slim-nosed troll quickly retorted. Thinking? That's all you do? We have been sitting here for so long, I don't even know why we came to this place. I say we leave and take the shinies with us. Burger Kungan slowly turned his head towards the slim-nosed troll, giving him a dreadful glare. <laughs> the slim-nosed troll responded, with his nose pointing upward. Do what you want then. Search some more. Go ahead. You'll never find it here, whatever it is you're looking for. I, however, have that which I desire right here. He carried on as he gave the glass sphere a mischievous poke, making the Alva tumble around inside. So these are trolls. This here is Berja Kungen. Kungen means the king. And Batty is mountain in Swedish, so this is the king of the mountains. There's like altars and stuff here. I don't know how much is left the, the game though. But I think that um we'll have to deal with Bayakungan next time. Um in the next episode. So woohoo! I called it Bayakungan and trolls, like real trolls. Anyways. Thank you all so much for watching. We're playing Oknit. We're really close to the end, presumably. And, um, again, still, you know. And, uh, I'll see you later.